welcome to another episode of the Philosophy Podcast. I am your host, Controversy, and to my right, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, none other than Mr. Darren Love. And together, we are the Philosophy Podcast. Thank you to you guys for tuning in, tuning in to a brand new episode. Thank you for tuning in once again this week, guys. And like we always, always say, what is on the agenda for this week, mate? What is today's hot topic? That's it. What is it? What, what are we talking about this week, mate? I thought we'd talk about business this week, you know, the business world. Very interesting. So this week, we're talking all about business. Business. What are your thoughts and your opinions, mate? I think um, some people enjoy business and some people don't. Mm. There's two ends of the stick of it, isn't there? Yeah. You know, it depends whether you're working for someone, I think, mm. or, or not. Or, or, you, or have your own business. Or whether you're self-employed or mm. not, you know. Because I think, like... That's a good place to start, mate. You start, I, I like the way you started it, you know. I yeah. like the way you started it there. Yeah, it's a good place to start. I didn't plan it, you know, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good place to start, a good way to look at it, you know. Because there's a big difference, like you said, the approach and how you feel towards something. There's a big difference between when you're an employee and you're an actual owner of, a, owner of the actual establishment, if you see what I mean, the one who owns and controls and finances and manages and does everything. Running the business. If you see what I mean, then in comparison, there's a, there's a, a big, big difference, difference in terms of approach, in terms of the passion, in terms of the... Everything, if you see what I mean, the person that owns a business really mm. wants to make progress every day, of course, make yeah. profits every day, that's it, and go forward every day, mm. by the way. Mm. But really, basically, the people that are working just want to go home a lot of time, do you know what I mean? You know, like, like, not, not all the time, not all the time, time but you know, you know what I mean, depending yeah. on what job it is, yeah. Depending yeah. On what job it is, but you have to hope that the, you have to hope that when you, as an empl- as a as a business owner and as and as an employer, you have to hope that when you employ people, that they're going to be reliable, trustworthy, exactly. loyal, hardworking, and they're going to all these qualities. They're going to have the manners that you have in a kind of way. Yeah, and, um, respect your business the way you'd want them to. Yeah, and they they, they want to make a profit for your business as mm. well. You know, to help you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for themselves mm. in a kind of way because it does work like that sometimes yeah. doesn't it you know when you mm. work for somebody else I mean really it's, it's all down to having a good employee in, it, in, in a way true yeah you, you know if you've got a, a good person that's got um, good people skills and it also helps if the person enjoys their job and what also I always say to people like just because something might not be your dream job, just because the job that you're working right now, the occupation you're in or whatever might not be your absolute dream job, doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it, yeah? As long as you're getting paid a decent amount, what you deem to be a decent amount for your time and for your services in which you're providing, you know what I mean, whatever work it may be, then and you're making a decent living, then, you know what I mean, you can still enjoy your job, you can still give 100%, it's like even me, yeah? I love my job. But I wouldn't say that it's my absolute ideal job, if you see what I mean. My ideal job is what I'm working towards right now in terms of my goals and my music and other things, which I won't go into now because we're not, you know, we're not talking about that right now. Music is um, good too, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. So maybe we can expand upon, upon that a bit later. Um, but you should always, like even me, I wake up, I make sure that when I wake up in the morning, I get, because I work like three or four 12 hour shifts consecutively every week, if you see what I mean. So... You know, I, and once upon a time I used to do five 12 hour shifts a week years ago, you know what I mean? When I was really on the grind and young and really, you know, hustling and trying to, you know, get somewhere in life and sort myself out, you know. Um, but I still, I still always had the mentality that I know that I've got to go to this job to provide for me and my family. And yes, it might not be my ideal job, but I still enjoy it. And I'm going to give 100% because, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, someone is paying you. You know what I mean? As someone is, is depending upon you as an employer, if you see what I mean, they're paying you for a service. And at the end of the day, if they're, if they're paying you what they're supposed to pay you and they're treating you well, like you said, you've got a good, a good boss, a good employer who's taking care of you. you. You know, you've got quite a lot of holiday every year that you can have, like, sit, you know, five, six weeks of holiday every year and, you know, good pay and pension and lots of different things that are beneficial for you and your family and your life and going forward and in the future and all those kind of things. Then why not try to enjoy, enjoy your job? 
you know? It, not, it might not be the job that you wake up every single morning going, God, I can't wait to go to work, but it it's provides, if you see what I mean, and you're happy, you're stable. What, you know, what is that the moan about, you know? I know sometimes it's hard to relinquish your time, all that time, because you feel like you spend a lot of your time at work in order to, you know, to, to be, you know, to survive in the quote-unquote matrix, as most of us have to do. Um, but you still want to try to enjoy it because at the end of the day, if you are a provider, especially as a man, especially like the man of a household, like you know, you're lead, you know, you're a protector and a provider, then you have it's you have to do what you have to do. So you might as well enjoy it. I, mean, I think I yes. think some jobs are really difficult to enjoy. Yeah, true, true. You know, I agree with that. Yeah, or maybe impossible to enjoy. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't want to work with metal all day long. Honestly, no, you know I mean, in, mm. in, in a factory. Yeah, day after day. Mm. Well, I'm sure there's some people out there that really enjoy that, though. Well, you, you know, you, you, know, get what I mean? you know, it is an art. Yeah. You know, metal is an art after all, do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, so, you know, but it's not my cup of tea working in the hot conditions and a lot of banging going on all day. Yeah. If you see what I mean. Yeah. You know, and I just think some people are living in um, not heavenly conditions, if you see what I mean, you know. I mean, I've worked in factories in my past, do you know what I mean? I couldn't wait to get out. Yeah. You know, and then when you do go out, especially in the wintertime, summer but in the winter time it's dark yeah you go home yeah. you go to bed then you get up it's dark then you go to work and you're in the factory all day you know and you're going around the clock and sometimes you might have week off in the summer all day and you might see the sun and you think wow you know and then that goes really quick and then you're work again in the factory do you know what I mean and some people are kind of stuck in that world today do you know what I mean it is yeah. you know these jobs need to be filled up yeah and you see even like sewers you know I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want that job, do you know what I mean? You know, but some people have got to do it. Yeah, someone has to do it, yeah. And there are some really horrible jobs out there mm. that people do. They might get a bit of money for it, you know, but at the end of the day, are, are they living? Are they having a life, you know? And especially if they're doing it for a long, long time, you know, all their life, you know. And yeah. Then you retire. Then by the time you retire, you can't really sort of like do much at that age anyway because you haven't got no money, energy. You know, and it's a bit of a scam. Well, you think, you know, you, you don't really feel like decorating or anything. You know, there's no point in decorating your house, is it, when you're 80 years old, when you're, you're going to be out soon. You know, yeah, I mean? you know yeah. you get that kind of mentality when you get a bit older. You know, you're not, you, you realise you're not going to be left, you know, you're going to be out soon. You're going to leave everything that you've brought mm. behind, you know. Mm. I mean, let's say I died tomorrow, do you know what I mean? I'd leave absolutely everything behind. Yeah. God, you know, to I don't know what will happen to it because I won't be here. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Maybe that's something to think about for the future, man. Well, that's it. You know, you just don't know because you can. You don't always have to write. There's one thing people don't realise too, right? You don't always have to make it a legal thing where you have to go through a solicitor. Mm. You can actually just get a pen and paper and write out your final wishes, essentially, in a book or a diary. It'll be left for people to find eventually. So, if God forbid anything happens to you, they find it, they'll be able to read it and see if you see what I mean. That you'll find I mean, it. even that's a business, isn't it? You know, like yeah, yeah. When, when you go for wheels, oh, yeah, and yeah, it's making wheels and all this kind of stuff, you mm. know, you've you got to pay for it, and it's all officially on paper, it's all a business, you know, and even when you die, yeah. You know, it's kind of like all a kind of business again, isn't like, it? All you know? business. We live in a business, what, a, everything is business in this world, mate. You know, Almost everything is transactional. Mm. Even when it's not intentional, sometimes it still be transactional. You mm. know? Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want that job. Yeah. Would you like working as a, a business, as a funeral? No. You no. Know, and you got people coming in and saying, look, my, uh, my sister's just died. Or, no. Know what I mean? Not my cup of tea. Or... There's some jobs that I just... But I must say, obviously, some, as someone who has worked in the healthcare industry for a long time now, and someone who kind of has done various different roles in the healthcare industry, but, you know, through working my way up kind of thing in, in different, you know, different places and whatever, um, I've actually looked after people before, in my, you know, um, in, their, in their last days, you know, I've looked after quite a few people. Um, I think I spoke about it briefly, actually, in one of the previous episodes, a few episodes back. Um, yeah, I did look after quite a few people towards the end. Of, you know, I've I've looked after probably close to maybe about ten people, 
well, I've looked after a lot of people, but I mean, in terms of like people who, have, who, who I know I've looked after till they've literally passed, if you see what I mean. Um, it's about 10 people, if you see what I mean. Well, when you retire. Um, yeah. And one of the hardest things to do as well is having to wash when you've got a, you and one of your colleagues, one of you and one of the other, you know, you know, you and one of the other nurses has to, you know, has to obviously wash the person and get them dressed up. Um, especially like some, sometimes like okay, where, okay, I've worked in homes and stuff before where older people have passed away unexpectedly, you know, um, and obviously they, they obviously they went into a home because they you know they're coming to the end of their life and that was the reason they went in, um, but they, sometimes it just happens you know um, unexpectedly if you see what I mean, um, um, it's very suddenly, um, and then you know they pass and you have to like I said you got to wash them you got to wash them and dress them and um, and so when you know when you you know obviously then you've got to call the people if you see what I mean. You're, um, and then they'll come and collect them and do what they have to do, if you get what I mean. Um, and that's not an easy, easy, that's not an easy job, mate. You know, you've got to be, and the reason that I, I was able to do it, I must say, is because those people that I looked after, I looked after for a number of years. So the relationship that we have, I was almost like a family member to some of those people. So when they eventually passed, having to do that was kind of a bit of an, I don't, not an honour, but you get what I mean. Yes, like, you get familiar like, with these people, don't you? It was like it was like uh, this is the least I could do for you. Now that you've passed and you've gone on to a better place, like you know, the least I can do for you right now, you know, is to get you, you know, you I mean, right, like I said, it's usually two of you because obviously they've passed and you need two of you to, to do everything. Um, and then you know you've got to wash them, and then, you know, you know. So it's yeah. Well, I mean, when you retire, yeah. that's kind of like the end of the business world for you. Yeah. In a kind of way, you know, it's like we were talking about childhood not long ago. Yeah. In another episode. Mm. And when you're a child, you know, you're not really in the business world then. It's yeah. only when you kind of like leave school, mm. you come into the business world. Mm. And you've got to join it in a kind of way. Mm. So, you know, like, yeah, so it's quite interesting really, isn't it? Yeah. Where, I mean, personally, I've never, I mean, because I have been self employed before. And I quite enjoy it, do you know what I mean? You know, you, you do get into sort of like, um, it gives you a few zazzle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a kind of way, because you know you're self employed and you know that the more you work or whatever, you're going to earn more money and more, yeah. you know, and so on. Yeah. And you get sort of like rewards for it mm. in a kind of way. But then sometimes when you're sick, it can go all wrong. All yeah. All yeah. If you sort of mean, mm. it's difficult, you know, some yeah. people lose everything. You know, especially in some countries like uh, in America, you know, some millionaires who can instantly lose everything because yeah. they, they come down sick or yeah. something, do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, I think the rules are a little bit different here. There's safety nets. You know, There's right? safety, more safety nets in the UK. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but I think like the, 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 the business world is kind of like a mathematical world really, isn't it? But every like like you said earlier, like literally everything is related to business. Almost everything in life, you know. Mm. Um, even like we're talking, like, okay, even marriage today more so than ever before. That's a business. It's a business. It's a business arrangement more so today now than ever before because it's mm. everything I today. I didn't realize when I did it. It's I'm all sorry. about assets and 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 you know it's especially like when when divorce and these kind of things come into play. It's it's. You know, people, you know, sometimes people are like, okay, a man, okay, <clears throat> and it goes both ways, not just for man, not just for men, sorry, um, but sometimes let's say a man who's very successful might meet a, a woman and she's got a good life, whatever, she's got a decent life, whatever, but she's not overly successful, she's got just, you know, she's a working class citizen, um, but he's super successful, multi-millionaire, got loads of money, and they might get together for a year, and then it's like they want to get married, if you see what I mean, and then they might get divorced a year later. And then all of a sudden, she's entitled to, you know, half of his fortune. And it's like, like she, she wasn't there during the process of him putting all the, putting in all those hours of hard work and graft and grinding and not sleeping endless, endless sleepless nights, you know, just, you know, working himself to the actual absolute core to get to where he got his success in whatever field it was that he, you know, he made his, his wealth in. And then all of a sudden now, you know, just because, you know, they've been together for it, they had a relationship and then they got divorced a year later. Um, now she's entitled to, 
you know. And the same thing goes for a man too. If a man meets a wealthy woman like that too, I don't agree. Uh, especially if she's a super wealthy woman that started it from the ground up, just like a man who started it from the ground up and you know built a huge amount of wealth over time just through hard work and and, and dedication. And now someone comes along and decides that they're in you know after a year's time you know now you're separated they decide that you know they they're entitled to half of what you you know you've accumulated before you even met them. That like that to me that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? It's 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 a messed up world. You know. It is a messed up. I can understand like when couples get together young, yeah. And they get married and have kids and whatever else, and they've been together, and then like say that they've been together like married for 10, 15 years, and then they separate, and then the court then says, okay, we need to divide up all the assets fairly amongst the two of you. That makes complete sense, if you see what I mean, because they've been together from the beginning, all those years together, building everything together, everything they've acquired up until that point, and then okay, the division of it 50-50 is, is fair to me. You both participated in, you know, I mean, in, you know, you know, to the point where you got to. So, you know, but it's just, yeah. yeah. It does make it's it. It's a flawed, a flawed system. That's business, the, that's the business is, it can be, you know, it can be beautiful, but it can be quite nasty. Yeah, way, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. There's competition out there and there's... Yeah. People, but there's no, there's no friends in there's, business. Well, there's mate. always companies at competition with each other. Yeah, so it's a ruthless, ruthless kind That's of That's right, you industry, know, and there's yeah. another company that would want, want to sort of like put everyone out of a job, you know, yeah. from another company. So that they can, so they can profit from it. You know, yeah, and they yeah. make a lot of money from it, whatever, you know. It, mm. Even like these, um, what do you call them, these flu vaccines, there mm. was a big business to mm. profit out of it all. You know, everything's a business thing. Yeah. Everything you can think of in a kind of way. Mm. And I think it's not, it's it's kind of nasty, you know, for children. Yeah. You know, when you think about it. You know, yeah. you've got children, mm. like we were talking about childhood not long ago. You know, they're, 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 you, get, you have a childhood, and apparently your childhood is, is on, the, on the, the age of 13. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so mm. as you become 13, you're an adult now. But it's not the time you... Well, not, have, an, not an adult, but, yeah. It's not the time you're about 16, unless you go to college, of course. Yeah. Because you want to study and get a better job, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, there's a lot of competition going on out there, isn't it? It's competition, yeah. competition. Mm. You know, and everyone's racing to get the best jobs. Yeah. The best yeah. paid job. job yeah. Yeah. Or, I don't know, do you know what I mean? You know, mm. and so on. Yeah. You know, everybody wants a good job, don't they? Yeah. You know, I mean... One good job, I think, is sort of like working as a holiday person or something, you know, and touring the whole world. And yeah. Like that, you know, going to hotel to hotel, mm. you know, and um, just sort of like, you know, there's lots of different jobs out there, right? And there's people that actually go go out there and test hotels to see if they're all right for their, you know, their, their um, customers and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. so on. Yeah. You well, know. I'm sure there's people out there, even probably YouTubers today that probably even do that, probably. I'm sure there's probably even like a YouTube market for that today, probably, as well. Because you've got so many different types of vloggers today that, that do all sorts of different types of vlogs and, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's people out there that actually probably pay to go to different hotels and actually record their experience in the hotels, if you see what I mean. And how, how, how good the, the room service was, how good the food was, how good... You know, how comfortable the bed was, how com you know, was it a nice place, was it clean, That's right. was it clean, what were the amenities like, I'm sure there's people out there that do those types of vlogs today too as well, probably, and earn yeah, yeah. quite a decent living from that. Yeah, I mean, everybody really out there, not mm. everybody, but mm. a lot of people are trying to earn a living, yeah. they're trying to get money one way or another, Yeah, yeah. and even on the internet, you know, because I'm on Facebook recently, I've been getting girls sort of saying, can you buy um, an Apple card or something, or an Amazon card? Yeah, and I'll show you a video or something. Do you know I mean? Show you something. Show stuff, you something right? naughty. It's really crazy. Yeah, you know, like, there's a lot of that that exists today, though, mate. A lot, a lot, a lot. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's quite crazy, you know. Like, but I just think everyone's trying to make money out of it. You know, yeah, well, not everyone, but mm. you know, it, 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 it's crazy how some people are trying to make money out there. Mm. You know, by scamming people and all that. Sometimes, you know, some yeah. people might talk to you for a long time on the internet. You know, and mm. then ask you for some money later on. Yeah. No, and all this kind well, of usually stuff. that's what they do. They try to build up relationships with people, yeah. um, and then so they can kind of build up that kind of like um, trust, a certain degree of trust, and kind of like a you know 
So I say kindness can be quite wicked. It can be. You people, know, and people try to use kindness to manipulate you. Yeah, you know. So it's a you know kindness is a sort of double sword thing. Because they've got an agenda. Not everyone, but people that have got ulterior motives and people that have got an, have got an agenda. You yeah. see what I mean? Where they their kindness, they like you said, they're being kind now for a couple of weeks, and then in a few weeks' time, let's say, okay, let's okay, let's use that example that you were just talking about. Say for example. You've got some women, and I guess some men probably do it too. Um, some women out there that would literally, like you said, talk to a man online for a few weeks or whatever, or try, or try to, attempt to, someone that they can find, if you see what I mean, that's willing to talk to them. Um, and then they'll, you know, talk to them for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden they'll be, oh, you know, I, you know, my electric's about to be cut off, you know, or, or you know, my phone bill's about to go off, you know, and I really yeah. want to talk to you, you know, I can't talk to you unless I've got my phone or my internet, can you send me $50 for that, you know, right, yeah. um, and that sometimes that's how it starts, and some of these men who are vulnerable, and okay. some, and some, some, money. sometimes lonely as well, yeah, usually sometimes they've got money too, a lot, some of them have got money too, they're single men who are, you know, might not be, you know, go for it. N might not always get on so well with the ladies, if you get what I mean, or not, not have so much confidence as the average person in terms of, you know, relationships, that kind of thing. And sometimes because they are lonely and things like this, they become vulnerable. Um, and you've got, unfortunately, there's people out there that will prey on that, you know, they will literally, you know, you know, they will prey on that and they will take advantage, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, you know, they'll make some, I've seen loads of like documentaries of like, especially like men, say for example, that have paid women, you know, they've been talking to women for years online, yeah, mm -hmm. sending them money every month and stuff for different things, whatever, and then eventually the woman says, look, I'm going to come and see you, you know, but I need money for a passport, I need money for a plane ticket, and I need money for, you know, to buy myself like a suitcase and some other bits and bobs and all this kind of thing to come and see you, so I'm ready to come and, you know, you know I want to come and meet you. And I, I've literally seen documentaries where men have sent like women like five, ten, fifteen, twenty grand and all sorts of shit. Um, over like, you know, so the first, I remember like even one time like there's this lady that was using this guy, and he sent her five grand for everything, the ticket, passport, everything, so she could come and see him, you know. And she was saying, oh yeah, I'm getting everything done. I'm coming to see you, whatever else. Um, and then when she was supposed to come and see him, she never. He tried to contact her. She didn't reply. Nothing. Completely dead. No response. After he'd sent the money and everything, if you see what I mean. Um, and then a few weeks later, she contacted him again and said, oh, there was a problem, you know, I lost the money, you know, this went wrong and that went wrong. And he just said, you know, I really want to come and see you. I'm so sorry. I love you. All this kind of nonsense, you know what I mean? And the man, being still vulnerable, will fall for it and be like, okay, you know, something might have went wrong or whatever. He might, you know, something might have gone wrong. You know, she might be telling the truth. I'll send her another five grand. And that's what he did. Send her another five grand. And then she said, oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry it went wrong the first time. Don't worry, I'll make sure everything goes right this time. Whatever else. Then she was supposed to come and see him again. What happened? Yeah. Never come. I never heard from her again. Act, act, um, her account was deactivated, etc. Gone. Disappeared into the wind. No, I'm saying it's loads And that happens to loads of people. A lot of people yeah. out there trying to get money, you see, you know, trying to... Yeah. You know, it's, it's... People take advantage of people's weaknesses. Some people. Oh, yeah. And that's what it yeah. is, you know? So, I mean, there are people out there, there are a lot of people out there that have got good hearts and they're educated, okay? And if they've got a business and they've got those two, you know, I've worked for people, right, that they're good in some ways, okay, but they're not in others. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I've worked for one boss and he was quite rude to me sometimes, you know, and he didn't have that people's skills, do you know what I mean? You know, but he was quite fair with money sometimes, okay. you, know, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's all kinds of little things that you need to learn in life, right? yeah. hey, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. but you do get wise people in life who've got really good hearts, mm -hmm. who are genuine people that are trying to do the best for everyone, Yeah. and they don't want anything, you know, they're using their kindness outwards, and they don't want anything. Oh, back. they don't want anything in return, yeah, yeah, so, kind of yeah. like us, kind of like exactly. us, essentially. Yeah, exactly. you know? yeah, you get those kind of people, right, but yeah. they're, they're running a business out there, you know, and they're being fair with their employees, their employees are all happy, but then you get other companies, and then assholes running it. Yeah. And they ain't got a clue what they're talking about here, yeah. or they might have certain skills, but they haven't got all skills mm. that it takes to be a good person or run a business, do you know what I mean? Mm. All this kind of stuff, you know? Mm. You know, I think, like, to run a business, really, to be uh, a good boss and or 
also, you know, a good businessman to make a good company work. Mm. You know, you just need so many skills. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I think you know to mm. to make it all perfect. Yeah. You know, nobody's perfect. Mm. You know, even I'm learning. Yeah. As I said, you know, like I'm aiming to become a better philosopher than I am today. You know, next year. Yeah. You know, and know a little bit about more about what I'm talking about. Mm. But sometimes I might not. Do you know what I mean? But but well, we're only human. Well, we're only human, mate. I just know that every year that goes by, yeah. I am slowly getting a little bit more intelligent. You know, and I am mm. starting to understand life. You know, it's, you know, I kind of understand the present a bit in the future. You know, in the past a little bit. You know, and you need to understand all these things. You know, you need to understand philosophy in life. Mm. Which I'm saying, you know, I'm starting to learn about philosophy myself, you know, the importance of it, you know, it's even important as, you know, to understand as a business person, you know, if you've got good philosophy, yeah. you're going to be able to run a good business. Like oh that. yeah, you have good principles, yeah. Yeah, you know, mm. not just good philosophy, I think, that, you know, there's other elements too, you know, you've got to have um, a good attitude. Yeah. Mm. As well, and mm. a good heart, you know. Have a look at it, right, mate. 